Erev Tov, everyone. The um, Farshim and this week's Farsha are very interested in the fact that Bilam keeps on changing his physical location regarding his statements to the Jewish people. What, if anything, is involved in that? And why does the Torah emphasize it so? And Bullock says, I'll take you here. And if you don't like it here, I'll take you here. And I'll take you to the third place. Bilam comments on the Jewish people from different places. What's the difference? What's the difference? What place he is in? or what location he is in, we're interested in what he had to say. And the fact that he said uh, he wished to say negative things and Kaviochel heaven turned everything that he said into a positive thing. So Meforshim here dwell on a basic idea of uh, human society that's very relevant in our time. All of us go through it. We can establish a fact. How that fact will be interpreted depends upon the predisposition and the outlook of the person who was going to do that interpretation. So the fact is a fact, but the effect of that fact is always open to different interpretations and to different outlooks and therefore to different results. So Bilam begins, he says, build for me these seven altars and we'll go to the top of the mountain and I'll prophesy from there. He prophesies from there, <clears throat> but he is unable to achieve what he wants to achieve. So then he tells Bullock, let's go somewhere else. Build me again altars. We'll prophesy from there. That also doesn't satisfy him. He tries it from a third place. The third place is where he says the famous verse, Yisrael. How good your tents are, Yaakov, your dwelling place is Israel. So Rashi there comments that uh, what, where's the blessing there? That he saw that the entrance to each tent was in such a location that the neighboring tent could not look into the other person's house. So it's a level of sneers. It's a level of privacy. It's a level that it's none of my business what's doing in your house. It's a level of overcoming uh, curiosity, uh, which not only kills the cat, but is detrimental most times because it leads to sin, to bad speech, and to all sorts of other things. Today we call it investigative reporting. But there's a certain of attitude of voyeurism to it. You want to know what the details of someone else's life or circumstances are. So the blessing that Bilam bestowed upon the Jewish people is that somehow they would overcome 
that uh, tendency. So regarding this pasuk, Matovu Alecha, so there are different customs. The custom of the Ashkenazim, our custom, is that's the first thing we say in the morning when we come arriving at the synagogue. Matovu Alecha Yaakov Mishkan Asecha Yisrael. And then we say the Posig, Vani Barov Chastacho, Ovo Vesecho, Eshtacha Velecho, Kotcho, Vira Secho. The Svardim don't say Matovu. They begin Vani Svilosi. That's the way it is in the Rambam, the way it is for most Svardik we shown it. In later times, the Gon of Vilna also did not begin with Matovu Alecha Yaakov. So what, what's involved here? What's the avoidance of saying Matovu Alecha? So the answer is a very uh, subtle one. Bilam sees that their uh, entrance ways uh, do not lead one to another. So he, he can, that's the fact. The fact is that the Pischeim shall alayim eno mukhubono zelazeh. That the entrance ways don't lead one to another. So we interpret that, wow, to look at that, look at how private we are, how modest we are, how we keep to our own business, we're not interested in us, other people's affairs. So by us, that's a, a mila, right? That's an asset, something to be admired. The Mephorshim say, Bilam, everything that Bilam says has a negative tone to it also. That's why it says, Vayafo Hashem es haklolo God turned the klola into a bracha. What klola? He's only saying brachas. The answer is that his bracha has a negative quality to it, has a klola to it. So he says, look at those people. They don't even want it. There's no connection one with the other. They're not interested what happens with the other person. They shut themselves off.
We interpret the prophet only in a positive fashion. That's why Yafo Hashem is a clove with And therefore, by And the interpretation is from the perspective of the person who is interpreting it. So Bilam keeps on moving because he's looking for a perspective of curse. He's looking for a place. Oh, now I came, I see that their doors are not open one to another. Good, that's what I was looking for. The other two times I didn't see that. We see that uh, so clearly. Uh, if you look at uh, people, so all people have faults because we're all human. Perspective that we look at it. How do we judge the person? And that's certainly true in public life. We're going to go through an election now. By the time it's over, you'll realize that there was nobody to vote for. So that's all in the perspective of how you look at it. The facts alone perhaps won't be in dispute, but the interpretation certainly will be. And Bilam is the master of interpretation. He's the op-ed columnist in the New York Times. He's the one that sets everything into focus. Through his lens, that's how we have to see things. That's why Chazal called the Mila Marosha. I mean, there's nobody in the outside world in the Chumash that said as many nice things about us as Mila. and was the master of language like Bilam. So what do we learn from him? I mean, we don't call Lotha Russia. We don't call other people. Because of the fact that he interpreted everything. He put a color upon ideas and events that turned everything negative. And that's why uh, the story of the daughters of Midian immediately followed the blessings of Bilam. Because the blessings of Bilam were poison because of the interpretation that he placed about it and the way he looked at it. So it depends where you're looking from. What angle are you looking from? Because I'll say by uh, testimony regarding a murder that you need two witnesses. The Gemara in Sanhedrin and the Gemara in Marcus says the witnesses have to be standing two different perspectives. If they both are standing together from one perspective, then that testimony is not sufficient because you have to see the whole thing. And if you don't see it, then it's your interpretation rather than what actually happened. So that's an important lesson here. Chazal said this parsha of Bilam is one that should be studied and studied and studied because in it is the secret of understanding human nature and of understanding how heaven protects us often from human nature and from ourselves. Rabbi Hanan Yemen Akash Yomeros, Akarish Borku was Akos, Israel, Kibala, and Doro Mitzvot, Shen Emra, and Nunchavet, and Mansisko, Yagil Doro Yadir.